the distinction between self and not self is ever present. It's ever clear because you're always experiencing with one of the bodies, you're always experiencing some quality or attribute that intermingles with the other attribute. The body is just the attribute too. It's a means to know other attributes that are really produced by that body. So the soup interacts with itself, but it never grasps what's not the soup, which is you, your real you. So I like this tradition. It's good. It's very simple. Everyone can understand it with a little bit of exposure to these teachings. And everybody can quote unquote practice it by just applying that discrimination on a day to day basis. Then nothing needs to be done. It's just a matter of discriminating, which is very appealing to us mind based creatures because we can use the mind to discriminate and it will connect to that deeper level of truth or pure discrimination, pure understanding. And then all the 10 qualities he described become naturally they'll naturally flower as expressions. But like he said, it, those are outward signs of realization. They still are attributes, changing your quality from impure to pure or from angry to detached are still outer expressions of realization. So they don't actually define it, but they are natural emanations. That's how the soup changes when it realizes it's just soup and it's not the cell and the flavor of the ingredients change and everyone can do that. That's what's so nice about it. So compassionate about this path. So everyone already has that discrimination available within them. It's innate wisdom. It's innate discrimination. It's innate clarity. It's innate knowledge, innate seeing. It's intrinsic to ourselves, our very nature in each moment. It's available. We just have to not be fooled by what appears. Maintain mindfulness of what appears with the wisdom that we're not what appears. That's the golden combination. It's the attentiveness of what is, what appears, what is known with the wisdom in the background, the discernment, the knowledge, the understanding that that which we're holding within our mindfulness can never reach us, can never affect us. It's very simple, very direct. It's very here now, always available. Nothing obstructs it because you can, whatever comes your way, you can be mindful of that with the knowledge that that too is not you. Whether it's struggle or pleasure, be mindful of the struggle and the pleasure equally, like you're being aware of the whole soup of sensations with the knowledge, with the firm strength of clear recognition that it's not I, it's not what I am. It's happening on me, but it's not me. Everything appears on top of me, but it's not me. That can be maintained through everyday actions and speech. Even you can speak while recognizing how being mindful of your speaking as an appearance, as a quality. And therefore, how can it be you? You endure the speech begins and ends. The thoughts about the speech begin and end. The identification of the personality with what it says and how it's received begins and ends. It's not there when you sleep. It's not there when you're not talking. It's not there when you're by yourself walking in the woods. How could it be you? How could the walking in the woods be you? How could the sleeping be you? They all come and go. The sermon is obvious. It's so clear. It doesn't require any special gifts or talents or it even doesn't require concentration. It requires some mindfulness because otherwise you're in the soup, you know, you're just swimming around as one of the ingredients, but that's an assumption. And even that's transcended more and more when you realize in your moments of clarity that even when you were unclear, that wasn't you either. So that's when you transcend knowledge and ignorance or dependence on it or liberation and bondage. Because even while you felt like you were swimming around the soup, in retrospect, with mindfulness in that moment, you can still cut all association, all believe that you were lost in the soup. It was the body that was lost in the soup. You were just asleep to your true self. You were asleep to that discernment. Therefore, it felt like you were swimming in the soup as one of the ingredients among many other separate outward ingredients that you were reacting to and grasped by and affected by. But in retrospect, you can see very clearly that you were in that moment already in essence, in truth, ungrasped, even by being grasped, unaffected, even by the feeling of being affected. You're just not mindful of it in the moment. That's all right. Just practice mindfulness combined with the wisdom of discernment. 
Mindfulness combined with not this, not that. Not this, not that without mindfulness can be kind of sloppy or conceptual. But if you maintain an attentiveness of sort of the wholeness of the field, the wholeness of all the sensations and feelings and senses that are all appearing, commingled in the soup of presence, if you're mindful of the whole presence with the knowledge of neti neti, or I'm not that, that's really when it becomes very effortless and very obvious. And that realization is obvious. It's not a obscure thing. It's obvious. Waking up to what's already the case. You know, the goal that we seek is, again, it's what we already are. So it's so close that there's no way to it. You can only discern that it's the case or forget. But even that kind of just happens on its own. Yeah, all that is is the only illusion because it comprehends everything. You can say, okay, well, the... Uh, the cinnamon or the uh, garlic or the chicken or the water or the this or the that is the bondage, but they're all the same soup, right? They're all that is. If we're free from all that is, we simultaneously are free from all the individual components that appear separate, but they're not. So first there is oneness, and then there is discernment between the oneness and the truth. Duality is liberation. <laughs> but some degree of mindfulness is definitely helpful. Attentiveness, the duality between all that is and myself, right? Separation is liberation. Oneness is total bondage with everything. <laughs> like instead of being just the, uh, just the garlic chunk, you're now the whole fucking soup. I mean, what could be more bonding than that? You're one with everything. You're in love with everything all at once. Jesus Christ. This is a heavy burden. And not only are you identified with the body, now you're identified with everything. So separation is liberation. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that it's metaphysically understood at that stage that all that is, is not, doesn't have a nature apart from the absolute. But the separation is in the quality between quality and freedom of all quality. That's just a fun way to kind of go against all the common scriptures. Actually, unity is bondage. It's absolute bondage. And absolute separation is absolute liberation. Oh yeah, the non-duality police. We'll confuse some of them and we'll aggravate the others. But confusion is a good gateway into understanding. Good talk.